Cypress Hill Cemetery today. For no damn reason, really. Except that I haven't been there in a long time. I went out to Resurrection Cemetery on Staten Island a couple weeks ago. Took a whole bunch of pictures, made a whole bunch of video before they told me I wasn't allowed to do that. There was no signage, there's nothing on their website to communicate this. I also thought, maybe naively, that because it was owned by this, the same diocese as Old Calvary and New Calvary, I assumed the rules would be the same, but the thing about resurrection is it's very active. I think I saw at least three funerals in progress, uh, not to mention uh, just a bunch of people paying respects at the sites of uh, in the, uh, the mausoleum crypts and the, and the tombstones. I felt really uncomfortable taking photos all around because of this, because it was so active. So it was just as well when the dude pulled up in his car and said I wasn't allowed to do that, I need a permit from so-and-so. I've been to Cypress Hills a couple of times. Um, and it is, it, my memory is that it's a pretty active yard. There's probably going to be services in progress. So we'll see what awaits, right? seems the, according to their website, the best way to get here was by the J. <clears throat> of course, begs the question, what the hell is a J train? I'm just kidding. I've, I've used the J a number of times, but it is a little bit off my radar from, for everyday usage. I don't know if the J has a nickname, like the N is called the never train and the W is the whenever the G is the ghost I don't know what the J train is if it has a nickname maybe it's the Jesus train in the past I've already done this <clears throat> been there done that in terms of the so-called notables Piet Mondrian is here, Jackie Robinson. Um, I can't remember any others off the top of my head, but uh, it's, it's pretty big too. And I think this is the only one that is uh, situated on both Brooklyn and Queens. This is the, this is gonna be the Brooklyn entrance, I believe another quirk about the J train as it goes through Brooklyn and ends in Queens and I made a rookie mistake once of what was it I wanted to go back to Queens from Brooklyn on the J and I made the mistake of taking the J back to Queens like you have to take it to Manhattan first to get back to Astoria or to get back in that direction you know. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. The entrance is over here. A 
1848. It makes about as old as old as uh, old Calvary, I think. Not an unimpressive gate. Cypress Hills is non sectarian, which puts it on my list of options, possibilities. I'm not sure I feel at ease being in a Catholic cemetery. I mean, I'm not going to be at ease because I'm going to be dead, but symbolically it doesn't seem appropriate. Even though I was raised Catholic, I've, I'm what, uh, there's a term they use for people like me, a cynical term that I'm surprised it took me so long to encounter, but the Catholics refer to people like me as hatch, match, and dispatch, meaning you get baptized, you get married, and then you die, and that's about all your involvement with the church. <laughs> that's the extent of your involvement. And like I said, I, I only heard about that term sometime around when my father died, I guess. And it was not in that context. But hatch, match, and dispatch is the cynical term that the Catholics use for people who just come around for the big events but don't go to weekly mass or make any financial contributions. I was actually baptized pretty late because uh, we lived overseas and they, I just don't, I don't remember what the details were, but I don't think there were a whole lot of Catholic churches in Laos. <clears throat> I have no memory of that. So I had to wait until, I ended up waiting until like I think the seventh or eighth grade to get my first communion. So far, this uh, Cypress Hills is not as lively as I remembered it. There were uh, a number of hearses up front, so there is something going on here today, but at the moment, I'm not seeing it. Beautiful fall foliage, or a little bit of it is left at least if you're into beautiful. And as for the hatch, match, and dispatch thing, I never made it to the match part. <laughs> Fine with me, by the way. Can't tell you how many men I've talked to who are like, don't do it, don't get married, just don't do it. No less than my father sounded that drum beat. And just as I was saying, there's no, no activity visible to me. As I approached this intersection of Dolorosa, I lost count of how many cars just, just rolled by in a funeral procession. It was, I mean, easily over a hundred, easily over a hundred cars. And of course I put the camera away. Dolorosa, my mother's middle name was Dolores. Such a doleful, sad name, appropriate for her. That was a big funeral. I don't know, I have no way of knowing who who is being buried now, but that was a lot of people. <laughs> this is what you call a zinker, also known as the poor man's mausoleum. <laughs> the sucker's made out of zinc, and it's what you call a genealogist's wet dream because the lettering 
will withstand anything, withstand all the elements. You could probably get struck by lightning and survive that, unlike a lot of other styles. Stones become unreadable. Marble, of course, becomes basically dirt after a while. But the zinker, these things are eternal. And it's made of, the, it's cheap. The material was cheap compared to others. And that's why it's called the poor man's mausoleum. <laughs> but so many stones become unreadable after just a couple of decades. It just depends on the material they were made of. But the irony of things is, it, at Calvary at least, Old Calvary, you see a lot of old marble markers. And marble was the material of choice for the wealthy because it was so expensive. But those are all just almost all unreadable as they might as well have disintegrated under the elements. But the poor, or at least the frugal, their memory lives on because they chose the cheaper, the cheaper cut. They chose the zinc over marble or the zinc over any number of other options. This is a um, an Asian section. I dated a Chinese woman for a number of years. She never said anything about this, but um, one day she and her family just up and went out here to Cypress Hills to pay respects to some a forebear of some stature in their in their lineage. Um, it just surprised me because we both were, uh, you know, we both had an interest in cemeteries and this sort of thing. She never mentioned that she had family that was buried out in any of the, the New York cemeteries. I don't remember what the occasion was. If it was an anniversary or just something they just spontaneously decided to do. I think. There's a great baseball tombstone at Greenwood. I have to go out there someday. Revisit. It's by, um, it's the burial site of, I can't think of his name now, but the person who is credited with inventing the term baseball and who was an early writer about the sport. Chadwick. I believe it was William Chadwick. Of course, the real trouble with these portraits is they get vandalized. If you ever make it out to Mount Zion, the Jewish cemetery, it's conspicuous how often those things get smashed up. I mean, it's clearly anti-Semitic and its intent, or at least that's how most people interpret it. In this case, there might be a whiff of racism. Now you can forget anything I said about there not being much, uh, much activity here today. I just, I just stood back as three separate processions rolled by. And none of them are as big as the, the first one that I mentioned, but all pretty good turnout. I think the busiest uh, yard I've ever been to was probably Arlington. It's a strange atmosphere at Arlington, as I recall, because uh, there's so many tourists, and that gives, <laughs> those folks give, gave the place kind of a almost festive atmosphere. 
And in the midst of all that, you've got a constant churn of burials and 21 gun salutes. My father was a, my father was a suicide and he shot himself in the head. You know what, they really should have asked us about this, but little did we, did we know, little did we have, have it on our radar that they were going to give him the, the 21 gun salute. We really wished they hadn't done that because that, of course, was the last sound he ever heard. But it's done. There's nothing we could have done to stop it. My sister would say later that that triggered something in her. All right, I'm just gonna get out of here. There's too much going on. I just almost walked into a, looks like a massive funeral service. I mean, I'm not laughing because it's funny. That's a cool one with the helmet. I'm just gonna try to find my way out of here. Stay out of trouble. The landscaping isn't bad. Oh God, Christ, I gotta put it away again. It's not a horrible view. <laughs> I was starting to think I was lost, but I remember coming up these stairs on the way in. The battery ran out when I was talking about how I almost walked into a massive <laughs> funeral service and I mean I don't mean to laugh at it because it's not funny but but you don't laugh at something because it's funny you don't laugh at something because it makes you happy you laugh at something because it makes you nervous it touches a nerve that's the secret of comedy right there I think the Laughter gets um, associated with happiness because it hijacks the gesture, it hijacks the smile, which is the symbol of happiness. But I think laughter is actually a pretty ugly, or it can be a pretty ugly exhaust, mental exhaust. Anyway, I just thought this was a nice, interesting looking fence. <laughs> the J train off in the distance. But speaking of comedy, this reminds me of a joke that I heard, which seems appropriate given the location that I find myself. Um, this is a joke I heard over the... Uh, the daily prayer line, which you can get to from most PTS payphones by dialing star one zero. Not everybody gets this joke though, so brace yourself for that possibility. But um, this dude dies and goes up to heaven and he's at the pearly gates. And St. Peter is there and St. Peter says, well, sir, you, you gotta tell me that you could, did a good deed before I can let you in. And the dude says, oh, I did a good deed, all right, I saw. Saw a bunch of skinheads p picking on an old lady and stealing money from her. So I went over to them and I, you know, said, mind your own business and took a couple of punches at them and kicked over all their Harleys. And St. Peter says, oh, that was a good deed indeed. Uh, when did this happen? And the guy says, oh, about three minutes ago. <laughs> I think that's a funny joke. Hope you do too. I'm definitely getting out of here now.